the mass extinction at the end of the Cretaceous had a less dramatic impact on plant life than on other organisms, most groups of plants survived and continued to diversify, later changes in climate, as well as the evolution of new animals, had more profound consequences for the world of plants. The rapid evolution of different land animals during the Paleogene contributed to the development of ecosystems that were much more similar to those of today than those that had existed in the Cretaceous. An important new feature of Paleogene vegetation was the deselopment of closed forests composed of large angiosperm trees, there is little evidence for these kinds of communities in the Cretaceous, by the time of the Eocene, very warm climates with abundant rainfall led to the extensive development of rain forests, not only in equatorial regions but also as far north as southern England, the Eocene London clay flora of southern England contains the fuits and seeds of mangroves and many other plants that are characteristic of tropical Sourhest Asia today, Eocene floras of a similar age from other parts of the world often contain a high proportion of large leaves, a characteristic of tropical vegetation today. At the height of the warm Eocene climate, trees also grew very close to the North Pole, well above the latitudes at which forests now grow. During the Eocene, there is increased evidence of coevolution between angiosperms and the new groups of vertebrates and insects that flourished after the Cretaceous Paleogene boundary. Important insect pollinators, such as bees and moths, became more common in the Paleogene, and some fossil flowers from the Eocene show specializations for insect pollination, such as the presence of oil glands and bilaterally symmetrical flowers. The average size of angiosperm fruits and seeds also increased in paleogene floras, reflecting an increased reliance on mammals and birds for dispersal. Ligodium contains about 40 species of ferns, which are characterized by having leaves that continue growing to undetermined lengths, with slender twisting axes that allow them to climb. These climbing leaves are unique among ferns, giving, at feist sight, the wrong impression, that of a climbing leafy stem, the pinules are either untoothed, toothed, or regularly lobed and there is. A thin vein running down the middle of each lobe, which splits into secondary veins its fertile leaflets are also unusual in having very narrow leaf segments with their spore cases on cone-like extensions it is the distinctive sterile and fertile foliage that permits the recognition of ligodium in the fossil record leaves in the fossil record take ligodium back to the late Cretaceous while spores similar to those of ligodium are known from the Triassic onward today ligodium grows in tropical and subtropical regions on all continents. The Osmondaceae appeared in the late Permian of both the northern and southern hemispheres evolution of the family was rapid during the late Paleozoic and early Mesozoic giving it the longest fossil record of any of the ferns there are more than 150 extinct species and a number of living genera including Osmunda much of the geological history of the Osmondaceae is based upon mineralized trunks these fossil stems are very similar to those of living members of the Osmondaceae some fossil leaves have been assigned to living genera when they are nearly identical to the foliage of living ones and there are even Triassic specimens from Antarctica that are indistinguishable from the living species Osmunda claytonensis the fossil record also shows that the family had produced different fertile and sterile fronds by about the Jurassic. The earliest records of this genus are from the Cretaceous but Metasequoia became one of the most abundant conifers in the Paleogene and early Neogene Northern Hemisphere growing as far north as Arctic Canada large petrified trunks and stumps of Metasequoia have been found in North America Metasequoia shoots can be easily recognized by the stems that branch simultaneously on either side the two ranks of paired leaves flattened into one plane and by the structure of the conus if they are still attached to the shoots Metasequoia has like other conifers with male pollen producing cones and female seed cones differentiating metasequoia species can be a problem because many are based on just a few fossil specimens now four or five fossil species are reliably distinguished by shoot and cone structures or by their seedlings there are no known fossils of metasequoia in the late neogene and it was thought that they had died out until living plants were found in china e equals 0.4 s greater than there are about 35 species of spruce living in the northern temperate and boreal regions today. They are tall evergreen trees with broadly spire-like crowns and shoots that can be identified by the woody peg-like crowns and shoots that can be identified by the woody peg-like structures at the bases of the leaves. Picea bear cylindrical, pendant seed cones on leafy branchlets on their upper branches. 
Today the species is found in montane and subalpine forests in North America, Europe and Asia. These conifers have needle-shaped leaves that are flattened into one plane. Individual leaves are narrowed at the base and have rounded tips. Fossil podocarpus can be distinguished from the similar shoots of taxodium, taxites and sequoia by anatomical details of their leaf surfaces. There are reports of podocarpus pollen grains from the Cretaceous odd North America, but by the Paleogene, the genus was restricted to the Mississippi Basin area. Podocarpus leafy shoots are known from the Paleogene of Australasia, South America, and the southern part of North America. The probable origin of the genus was in Australasia with subsequent migration to South Africa and across the Pacific from west to east. There are about 100 living species of Podocarpus in the warm temperate and subtropical regions of the southern hemisphere. Most of the information on the early fossil history of the Platanaceae family comes from fossil leaves, the earliest come from the Cretaceous of Europe and North America, but they are far more common in the Paleogene and Neogene of Europe, Asia and North America. Many of the leaves have leaf venation patterns and flower structures that exclude them from Platanus and refer them to other genera, such as Maginati. Leaves of Planatus and similar plants are distinctive in being large, stocked and palmate with five or more lobes. The leaf margins are smooth or have serrations near the tips, there is a midrib in each lobe, either coming from a common point above the stalk or from extra branches a short distance above it. There are numerous secondary and tertiary veins, although the latter are hard to see. Platinous fruits have hairs to help them disperse on the wind. Similar plants, such as Maginati, had hairless fruits. Magin. Idia is an extinct genus of plane tree that has been reconstructed by putting together different platanus like parts of plants that were repeatedly found next to each other at various localities in western North America. The leaves are large with five to seven palmately arranged lobes. The trees bore stocked globular masses of male flowers or female flowers. They were adapted for early colonization in open disturbed areas, especially close to water. There are three known fossil species of these flowers and fruits. The flowers are radially symmetrical and borne on long, slender stalks. They have five petal-like organs, fused to at least halfway along their length, and a prominent radiating network of veins. Only one species has petals and these are phi and smaller than the sepals. The projecting ovary has the bases of five pollen-producing stamens fused around it. After pollination and fertilization the ovaries swelled to form five-lobed nut-like fruits similar to those of linden trees, but they were still attached to the remains of the sepals and stamens suggesting that the whole flower was wind-dispersed. These are many species of fossil banksia based on the leaves and the fruits from the Paleogene onward. In Australia, records from outside of Australia are very debatable. Fossil leaves suggest that Banksia was well adapted to limiting water loss because it can be seen that the breathing pores are confined to the lower surfaces of the leaves and in depressions lined with surface hairs. In living Banksia, only a few of the flowers in each flower cluster ever developed and expand into the distinctive two-valved fruits. The valves of the fruits open in order to liberate the seeds for dispersal. The earliest palm fossils are leaves, stems and pollen from the late Cretaceous, their remains were widespread and abundant in the Paleogene and fruits of the mangrove palm, nipa are common in European deposits. The size and number of fossil nipa suggest that conditions in northwest Europe at that time were similar to present-day brackish mangroves in India and Southeast Asia. Cyclocaria is a genus in the walnut family with only one living species. It is a deciduous tree growing to about 30 meters tall with pinnately divided leaves and male and female catkins. Its distinctive fruits are surrounded by disc-like wings that help them disperse in the wind. Fossils of the walnut family are known from the late Cretaceous of North America and Europe, but the first genus of living plants to appear is Cyclocaria in the Paleogene, a genus that then quickly spread from North America to Europe and Asia. The fossil assemblages where cyclocaria has occurred have also included such plants as Glyptostrobus and Metasequoia, suggesting a warmer temperate to subtropical climate. Today cyclocaria is found only in China. The earliest palms are found in the late Cretaceous but none can be reliably assigned to modern genera. Palms are found in tropical and subtropical areas today, and are thus good indicators of warm climates. The sable palm was one of a variety of palms with divided leaves, found in deposits in North America, Mexico and Europe. 
it survived into the Paleogene, and its fossilized fruits have also been found in North America and Southeast England. The name Sabolites was originally used for the leaves, but now refers to its seeds.